Hey, Lexi! Ah, uh, hey, Cameron. Hey, where did you go off to without telling me? I've said before that I want you telling me what you're doing when it gets laid out. Sorry, I'm sorry. On my way home from work, my mom called me asking for me to come over and plan out a vacation with her. A vacation? Turns out that I'll be going with my mom to Hawaii for New Year's as a small trip. Are you serious? We plan to only be there for a week or so. So you don't have to get too surprised by this one. <laughs> At first, it was going to be my mom and dad going to Hawaii together for that week. But now that dad's bedridden from his sickness, she's asked for me to go with her instead. Wait! Why would you guys still plan to go to Hawaii with everything else going on? What do you mean? Lots of people go on vacation during the New Year's, right? You think we're just joking? You guys are still planning to go on that trip that your dad was supposed to go on? While he's in the hospital, unresponsive because of his condition? At that point, people would normally just cancel the trip and stay home around their family. But if we were to cancel this whole vacation now, we'd be left having to pay a boatload in cancellation fees to all the hotels and restaurants. So, instead of having to deal with that, I think it's better that I go in Dad's place and then we won't need to worry about money, right? But if you started to think about the condition that your dad is in, you shouldn't have the mindset to go to Hawaii, right? You think so? I never thought I had to dwell on the thought of my dad being in the hospital that much. My dad won't even know we're gone because he's not even well enough to be awake. And he won't be for a long time, the doctor said. So there's really no point in us being home to go see him if he's not even going to be awake to say anything. I think now's the perfect time that my mom and I go out and do what we want since we don't have to be held down by him. This isn't about seeing him all the time, but the fact that you should be worried about him more than some trip to Hawaii. If I were you or your mom, I wouldn't care about having to pay a little or canceling and would stay here to be with my dad. Well, it doesn't matter what you do, because you're not even coming with us. You both really plan on going still. I have no idea how you have the nerve to do that right now. Oh, come on, Lexi. This is one of the things that always drives me up the wall with you. How you always act like you're so right about everything. Uh-huh. No matter how you try and make me feel bad about my choice, I'm going to Hawaii. Tonight I'll be home to get my things together. And then I'm heading back to my parents' place to stay until the trip. Don't even try stopping me anymore. Wait. No! What the heck, Cameron? Alright, I'm getting on the plane right now. So you both really are leaving? It's my job as my mom's son to be here for her when she wants to go out and do something. That's weird, though, considering her husband is in the hospital in really bad shape right now. I wonder what's going on inside her head right now. You're starting to get on my nerves here, Lexi. I'm just going to tell you this one last thing, then. If your dad does end up waking up during the time that you're both away... I'm going to have to tell him everything that's going on with his wife and his son, okay? Go right ahead. <laughs> I know for a fact he's not waking up while we're gone. <laughs> well, even if he does wake up, he'll at least have you there to care for him. <laughs> and make sure you don't wander off, leaving him without any family, alright? <laughs> so, with that, I'll be back in a week. I guess we'll just have to see what happens then. Lexi, Happy New Year! Wait, David! Happy New Year! How has your body been doing after being asleep for so long? Well, I'm still working out a lot of the kinks, 
But I have to say that all the hospital food actually tastes pretty good after not eating for so long. And I'm really looking forward to getting even better. That's so amazing to hear. By the way, something tells me that both Cameron and Lucy ended up still going to Hawaii then? Um, yeah. Cameron ended up taking your place and going with your wife. They left yesterday. I see. I'm sorry that I couldn't stop them. I told them over and over again not to go while you were in the hospital. But they never listened to me. They never even bothered to come see you in the hospital after you were taken in by the ambulance. That's alright, Lexi. I was the one that told my wife not to push herself to come see me. If I ended up slipping into a coma. So, she had every right to have gone away for a bit expecting that I wasn't going to wake up. I'm sure she just remembered that I said that, and so she didn't mean any harm by leaving to Hawaii still with Cameron. Then I suppose that I wasn't going to change their minds after all. Well, even if I hadn't said that to her, I doubt she would have stayed. I remember after being helped from the car accident by your family and you, that my wife had already been pretty reluctant to come see me because me being so badly hurt and sick would ruin the trip. Of course, a small part of me wanted to tell her to stay by my side as I was in the hospital, but she was very excited for the trip and so I never had it in me to change her either. David. I'm sorry that I've told you all this, but I thought it'd be best that you knew what was going on. Thank you. But there is a reason for them wanting to be away on this trip. And I think you should be ready to understand what I mean by that. I see. Well, for the time being, I will prepare myself for what's next and to help you. Thank you, Lexi. Lexi? Tomorrow my mom and I will be coming back, so can you come get us from the airport? Uh-huh. You want me to come all the way there? Don't you realize that the airport is a couple hours away from our place? Why not just take the bus back to our place from there? Or at least get an Uber or something to go home in? Well, we have a lot of things with us. You're my wife, so you have to listen to everything my mom and I ask for. Well, before we continue with this, your dad woke up. Really? When I was going to go and see him, he had woken up and started talking to me. Are you serious about that? He says that he has enough energy to text you guys, so I'll let him handle this. He can't really be awake already, right? You're lying, right? Cam. Um, hi dad. Did you have a good time in Hawaii? Um... I know that you went there in my place, right? Uh, ah, uh, right. We went to all sorts of beaches and stayed at a few really nice resorts. Even went out and tried surfing for the first time in my life. I see. I'm sure it was a great time, leaving your dad who was in a coma behind. So that you could go out to Hawaii, huh? Um... You both are coming home tomorrow, I hear? I'd make sure that you enjoy whatever time you have left there before having to come back and see me, okay? Hey, um, Dad. Well, I guess I should get things started then. <laughs> what are you going to get started? I, um... I'm sure you're just really happy to see us again, right? Maybe there'll be some sort of surprise for us when we get home, right? <laughs> Just make sure to let your mom know that she needs to be prepared for what comes next. Um, Dad? Maybe you're less happy and more mad then? Hey, Lexi! What is this? Why is there a divorce form? So you've made it back home now? 
Hope you made it back okay. But what is going on with this divorce form laying on the counter? Well, about you, Cameron. You were in Hawaii with another woman, correct? Um, why do you say that? Well, your dad started to look into your mom about her cheating. And lo and behold, you ended up being with another woman as well. And then once your dad found out about that, he told me. What? So you know about mom as well then? That's right, we both do. We both figured that you guys really continued with that trip, not because you didn't want to pay any cancellation fees, but because you both were going to have an affair, correct? I hope you both had fun at least. No, hold up. If you really think about this, things don't seem to add up, right? Do you really think my dad could have done all of that when he was in a coma for so long? Well, he told me that he's been looking into your mom for over half a year now. That's before he ever got into that accident, Cameron. And your dad has actually been awake for a month now. Did you know that? What? Of course not. Because neither you or your mom ever came to see him. When I started going to the hospital to help care for him, he opened his eyes. What? You hid that from both my mom and I? Well, when he asked me where the two of you were, I told him that they didn't plan to come see you. And so he told me everything and asked that I keep my mouth shut about it. Why, though? Well, your dad was a little upset about the fact that neither of you two wanted to be around him when he was in his time of need. But why would he never tell us that he was at least awake? Cameron, your dad knows that you aren't actually his son. What? I never really knew that you weren't your dad's real son. And David didn't really know either until he started looking deeper into things. But now he knows that the man that your mom went to see in Hawaii is actually your real dad. So really, this whole trip was going to be both your real parents, you, and then that woman you wanted to cheat on me with, correct? I'm not sure why I say that like it didn't end up happening, because you guys did see them and enjoy your time in Hawaii with them. You know all about that now. Dang it. I'm sure that your mom will soon be finding the divorce paperwork that I've placed in her living room for her to find. Huh? Your dad asked me to help him place it there while he stayed in his hospital bed. Are you kidding me? Ah, that's right. David has gone ahead and changed to a new hospital, so if either of you try to come and talk to him, you'll find that you're both too late. Where did he go to, Lexi? Well, I'm not sure about where myself. Why don't you know? Out of all the things that he decided to tell you about, he never mentioned the next hospital he'd be going to? Well, he realized once you both came back from Hawaii, he wouldn't want anything to do with you guys. The last time I spoke with him was yesterday. And then after that, we decided not to talk to one another anymore. So I haven't heard anything else from him since. And in the case of David, he doesn't know where I am currently either. I think if you want to find anything else about David's whereabouts, perhaps you'll have some luck talking to his lawyer when he starts talking with your mom about all of this. He even got a lawyer involved in this? Well, why the heck wouldn't he be, Cameron? As a matter of fact, I'm also going to be getting a lawyer soon. So when that happens, You'll be hearing from them instead of me, okay? You're getting one as well? There's some information and a few business cards with those divorce papers you found, right? Those will be the lawyers I plan to get involved with to help me see all this through. Hey, can we at least talk this over a bit more in person? You've been married for three years now, so you have to have the heart to want to talk things through, right? We've been married for three years, yet you choose to cheat on me. What made you think that was an okay thing to do when you should have the heart to talk to me? And also, even though he was never your father and never knew that, he raised you all the way to the point you're at now and learned recently that you aren't his and his wife has been cheating on him all this time. Imagine being in his shoes. 
and having to feel all the emotions he's having now, just trying to deal with all of this, especially after an accident that left him in a coma. Honestly, I might have stayed to talk things through with you over cheating on me, but what really pissed me off was you just leaving your dad in the hospital while he was dealing with all of this to go to Hawaii with your cheating mom. So me leaving you is justified, right? But, Lexi... Don't say my name anymore, okay? I've got to get going now. Huh? Make sure that I get all of the money I asked for in the settlement, okay? Please and thank you. What? Um, I... I still really do think of you as my real father. And what happened with me going to Hawaii and while I was there, um... Ah, perfect timing. I want you to tell this to your mom for me as well. I'm not going to change my mind about the divorce. And as for me and you, Cam, I'm planning on cutting all ties I have to you. What? And right now, I'm getting myself a new phone and a new number. So neither you or your mom will ever be able to find me or contact me ever again. Then, once you're never able to talk with me or see me again, you'll have to go through my lawyer, who is looking forward to talking with you both. But, Dad... I need to get back to getting my new phone now. Dad, please! To start, David had a long talk with his lawyer about how he wanted both his wife and his son to be taken out of his will, as well as for both of them to get nothing from him in the divorce. When this was brought up to both Cameron and Lucy, neither of them wanted to agree to what David was asking, and tried begging for him to rethink what he had planned to do to them. Of course he didn't budge, and so Lucy signed the document first, followed by Cameron doing the same with huge reluctance. And then, instead of taking any settlement from Cameron and Lucy, he only asked that Cameron's real dad pay him. In my case, I went and had a settlement made for both Cameron and the woman that he cheated on me with. Once they had both paid the money that I had asked for, they were left with the realization that I just took $15,000 from the both of them, and that things were going to become much harder. Cameron ended up leaving his job due to all the stress, and returned back to his mom and real dad with his new girlfriend, where they all started to live together with very little money to their name. Now, the only person that seems to be working any sort of job is the real father. And he is left with himself and three people that he'll have to start trying to care for. Hey there, Victor. Still living at home with your parents like a bum? Wow, Richard. That was quite an unexpected greeting. How are you doing? As for me, I am doing well, thank you for asking. And yes, I am still living with my parents at their home. That is absolutely unbelievable, Victor. You are almost 30 years old and still haven't left your childhood home? Well, Richard, technically speaking, I am still 28 years old. But yes, we are both getting up there in age. Victor, that is not the issue here. Don't you see the problem with being almost middle-aged and still living in your childhood home? Shut in from society and cut off from the world? Aren't you embarrassed to call that a life? I don't understand why you feel the need to describe my situation in such a negative light. What does my living situation have to do with you anyway? Oh, but it does. More than you could ever imagine. What do you mean? Well, I've been thinking about moving back in with mom and dad myself. What the heck? You just went on this whole rant about how I should be ashamed for being a middle-aged shut-in living at home with my parents? And now you're telling me that you're going to put yourself in the exact same situation? Victor, you and I are very different people at our core. I am a gainfully employed contributing member of society, working for one of the fastest growing companies in the country. On the other hand, there is you. 
a useless leech sucking the life out of your hardworking parents while being unable and unwilling to get a job or contribute to anything meaningful to society as a whole. Come on, lay off, man. How many times do I have to tell you this? I work from home. Oh, really? Professional house-sitting, is it? Or perhaps you're one of those YouTubers making videos all day long? What other pseudo-jobs do you have up your sleeve? You know, as well as anyone else should know that society is shifting towards remote work whenever possible because it saves time and increases efficiency overall. And besides, I am self-employed so my situation is a bit different than most people's. Ah, I see now. Only fans it is then. Whatever. Have your fun at my expense if it makes you feel better about yourself. But tell me, why did you all of a sudden decide to move back home with mom and dad? As the eldest son, it is my duty and responsibility to take over the family home now that our father is getting along in years and will be retiring at the end of this decade. Someone needs to step up and take care of our parents in their old age. And everyone knows that you cannot be counted on for anything, especially when it comes to responsibility. Something which I possess, but you clearly do not. Oh now, all of a sudden you want to play the role of the good son? You never once called our parents or visited them except on holidays. And even then you never spent the night at their home, always opting instead to rent a room at some nearby hotel. Because apparently staying with your own family was too much for you. The reason why I never stayed with our parents is because they already have enough on their plate dealing with your sorry ass on a daily basis. I didn't want to impose on them any further by adding another burden for them to bear. But now that I am moving back home, I don't want to share the same living space as some good-for-nothing shut-in like yourself. Just being in the same room as you during our family gatherings gives me an ulcer and causes me to break out in hives. So do us all a favor, move out of our parents' home, and make all of our lives easier. Whoa, 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 hold on just one minute there. Isn't that being just a tad bit selfish? So now all of a sudden because you want to move back home with mom and dad? I am supposed to just up and leave without any consideration for my own feelings or well-being? Truthfully speaking, I don't really care one way or the other. If mom and dad want me to leave, then I will do so without any fuss. But have you even spoken to either of them about your plans to move back in and take my place? Of course I have spoken to them. They both love me and are thrilled at the prospect of having me back home with them. It's not going to be a problem at all. And as for you, Victor, it's too embarrassing for me to even acknowledge you as my brother. So I have to act like you don't even exist. The people I work with don't even know that I have a brother. Believe me, it's in everyone's best interest if you just piss off somewhere far away from our family and let me have my way here. For the last time, I have a job. For God's sake, man, I have never had to try so hard to explain myself to someone and still not have them understand what I'm saying. And you're my own brother for crying out loud. You've been a failure at everything since as far back as I can remember. You're always chasing after my shadow and trying to mimic everything that I did and failing spectacularly every single time. If only you had been blessed with my brains and talent, then perhaps you wouldn't have had such a sorry excuse for a life. Well, I did manage to get accepted on my first try into the university that you failed to get into. So I'm not quite sure where you get off saying that I am not as smart as you are. Who cares about what university you went to? It means absolutely nothing if you go to a good school, but then do nothing with the education that you received, and instead become nothing more than a parasite leech sucking the life out of society. At least I managed to get hired by a Fortune 500 company and have something to show for my education. Unlike some freeloaders who shall remain unnamed. Okay, sure. Whatever you say, bro. We are two different people living separate lives with different goals and values. If we both enjoy what we do and follow our dreams, then everything is just peachy. Wrong again, Victor. While I am working my butt off every single day, proving my worth to everyone around me, 
You are still nothing more than an unemployed leech, sucking the life out of our parents and contributing nothing of value to society. Learn from your big brother for once and become independent. It's about time you quit sponging off our parents and get a life. For the last time, I'm not sponging off anyone here. There's nothing to sponge up here to be honest. What does that even mean? Everyone in our family has become successful in their field except you. Dad is the vice president of a big contracting firm. Mom is head nurse at the city hospital. And I'm a veteran employee at a tech giant. Then there's you. Probably a neckbeard SJW Reddit moderator who only leaves his room to nuke his nuggies and evacuate his bowels. Glad to know you think so highly of me. Unfortunately, that burn misses the mark completely. You may have graduated from a good university, but that is wasted on a shut-in that can't find a good job to pay for their own underwear. I really don't know why you're trying to stereotype me into being a shut-in, but I leave the house quite often when business requires me to do so. But that doesn't change the fact that you spend most of your time inside, does it? Stop trying to defend yourself. It's sad to hear you try to come up with excuses. Mom told me about your daily schedule, and she never lies. For heaven's sake, it's for work. I work from home because my line of work allows for it and actually encourages it. I used to frequent a shared office space to get my business done, but I find that I can focus better working from my own room. Ooh, buzzwords and Gen Z work ethic. Trying to make it sound cooler than it actually is, is cringy. I know how it really is, so nothing you can say can make your position sound better than it really is. I see nothing I say will convince you otherwise, so let's wrap this up. I still have quite a bit of unfinished work, so I'll take my leave if there's nothing else. Yeah, I guess being a professional recluse is a 24-7 job, so you better hurry up and get back to doing nothing. About me moving back. I hope everything is in order for me to take over. Moving? You're actually serious about that? Of course I was serious. Why would I lie about something like this? As I told you before, you never showed any interest in dealing with mom and dad. Whatever. I'll be moving in tomorrow. That's a bit on the sudden side, isn't it? So you and all your crap needs to be out of there before the trucks arrive. What the hell, dude? That's asking a lot on such a short notice. As I asked before, did you get mom and dad's approval for all of this? Do you really know what's going on in this household currently? A non-issue if that. Of course I know what's going on. I'm the eldest son. Mom was overjoyed when she heard I was going to move back in. I guess she's happy that the useful son is going to take the place of the gargoyle that drains her happiness and sanity. I see. So you really want me to leave and you're going to take my place? That's right. Nobody needs you, so get lost and make way. I'm sorry. You're feeling frustrated and abandoned? Too bad. Not really. I thought it would hurt more, but I actually feel kind of free. Like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You'll understand that once I leave. I'm never coming back, right? That's what we're all hoping for. So everyone is really okay with me leaving this house and burning all bridges behind me? Quit trying to sound so dramatic. You're acting like your simple existence brings some kind of value to the table. Spend more time packing and less time trying to make me feel sympathy for you. It's not going to work. You're the black sheep in a family of accomplished individuals. A louse like you brings down the prestige of our family and probably even the land value with your unwashed flesh. Excellent. What? I'm so glad to hear that from you. I was recently thinking that I really want to get out of here, so thanks for the seal of approval. Okay, I'll be out here with all my stuff before midnight. Thanks for taking over and taking care of mom and dad. Wait, can you really leave that suddenly? When you have no money? Don't think of asking mom or dad for money. <laughs> I told you, I can leave on my own with no help from anyone. I'm not sure where you're getting your information from, but I have plenty of money. How could you? You're a bum. For the last time, I'm not a freeloading sponge. So as per your wishes, I'll be leaving this house to your care. As an addendum, 
Don't bother me with any of the problems you may encounter as the new man of the house. I don't see how you have anything I would need or if any of your skills would be of value to me. Just leave and open a window before you go so your funk doesn't make me gag. Hurry up and pick up. We need to talk ASAP. I have nothing to say to you. I told you not to get me involved anymore. I'm finally going to be able to live my best life. You had your time. Now it's mine. This is not how any of this was supposed to go. What are you talking about? Mom and Dad are livid at me and want me to convince you to come back. No, and why? You have a job and bring in a handsome salary, don't you? They should be happy to have a reliable son like you looking after them. So it's no longer necessary for me to hang around there and keep them afloat. It's not that. Oh, perhaps you didn't tell them that me moving out was part of the deal of you moving back in? Nah, that can't be it. Ultra-reliable big brother Richard would never make a mistake like that. He would never kick his little brother out of their childhood home in a show of power and not tell their parents about it. I was in quite a hurry last night getting my stuff packed to go and didn't have time to talk to the rents. I simply assumed that you would have of course told them about the change they would have to witness. Well, it seems that mom didn't know that you would leave when I moved back in. She was so excited to hear that I was coming to live with them again. Apparently, she thought that we would be able to live together as a full family again. So she was overjoyed imagining how things were going to be again. Yeah, that's something you should have explained better. Anyhow, I'm not going back. Make sure you make the monthly mortgage payments on the house so you all continue to have a roof over your heads. Mortgage? I thought the house was paid off. You didn't even know about that? I haven't heard anything. Mom is in a hysteric panic and Dad looks like he's about to blow a gasket. I was just told to get a hold of you. What is this nonsense about paying a mortgage? Up till now, I was the one paying off the mortgage they took out on the house. How is an unemployed freeloader supposed to pay off anything? But more importantly, why did they take out a mortgage on the house? Let me answer those in order. For the umpteenth time, I have a job. In fact, it's extremely well-paying. A few years back, a security program I wrote was picked up by the Department of Defense. Since then, I've been raking it in programming security algorithms for all kinds of companies. I also make brisk business being a consultant and advisor on the side. I'm making money hand over fist at the moment and have plenty saved away in a rainy day fund that is more like a tropical storm vault now. Because I'm making good money now, I've been able to help out mom and dad in these tougher times. Now it's your turn to support them. Why wasn't I told any of this? You were just a freeloading parasite after university, right? There is nothing to freeload off of at that house. Dad makes enough money from his job as a contractor that there should be no need to mortgage the house, right? You really need to learn to stop and listen to people around you instead of running your mouth and trying to force your way by talking fast and loud. Dad took an early retirement a few years back and blew his entire severance package at the racetracks. He even went into debt to the bookies and is now working part-time as a janitor at the supermarket to try and feed his habit. You can't be serious. Mom had to resign from her job at the hospital because of the embarrassment her husband cost us. She's now working the till at the local gas station to help pay off dad's debts. I can't believe you really didn't know anything. No, this can't be real. This is nothing like it was supposed to be. This is not my plan. Plan? May I ask you what your plan was? I planned to quit my job at the firm and take it easy at home for a good while. You wanted to do what you thought I was doing? If I came home, then at least I'd have a place to stay for free and eat three square meals a day. I figured I could use this time off to figure out what I would do next. So the truth comes out. My cocky elite brother was really just a gopher at the bottom of the pecking order. Where did you hear that? A good friend of mine from university was hired by the same company as you. He said there was a guy that had been there for years, but was always screwing up paperwork, providing the wrong documents and being a general pain to everyone around him. He was suspicious at first because that useless employee's last name was the same as mine. But could it really be? 
I heard him out and asked for the full name of the landmine employed before him. Lo and behold, the name matched that of my dear old brother. Who was that? Tell me now. Doesn't really matter, does it? You know that most of the people around you felt that, didn't you? That's why you're quitting, to escape the ridicule and mocking stares. On top of that, I never thought I would have to pay for things when I move back home. I have no savings at all. Maybe you should have used your salary more economically. Instead of blowing it on a luxury car, designer clothes, and stupid watches. What should I do? The contract on my apartment was up, so I bailed before I had to pay another deposit on it. I have nowhere else to go. The only option is for you to come back and help out the family. That's a nope from me, bro. You told me to leave, and I did. On the condition that I would never return once I left, and we would never communicate again. You were happy to agree to that. Now you come begging on your knees after insulting me for years? I didn't know Dad was in debt, and both our parents are only working part-time jobs. That mortgage money was supposed to go to paying off Dad's debt. But he secretly took it to all the raises and lost it all on one raise. So the mortgage isn't the whole debt you need to deal with. You still have to pay off the principal on Dad's debt to the bookies. Have fun! All of it? Are you serious? Yes, it's quite the sum. With my earnings, I kept the interest payments at bay and was making some headway against the principal. It's now your responsibility, big bro. So as the responsible eldest child, you will now buckle down and wade through the mocking and ridicule at work so you can earn a paycheck to support your parents, right? That's impossible! I turned in my resignation yesterday. This wasn't how it was supposed to go. Why does nothing work the way I want it to? Life doesn't care about your plans, and those around you have no obligation to bend to your petty demands. I've spent the last five years of my life paying off dad's mistakes while weathering your vitriol. Now, it's your turn to pony up and my turn to enjoy the wealth I've justly earned. I also told you to make sure everything was okay with mom and dad. I figured you would learn the truth then, but you obviously didn't let mom explain anything and ran your mouth. This is what happens when you don't communicate properly with those around you. Same as your, I guess, former now job. I thought dad was a super successful businessman, so I had a safe fallback. Why did things turn out like this? Gambling addiction is a real disease. Half my efforts have been to try and keep dad from taking his paychecks directly to the horses, but he still tries every two weeks to sneak out to the races. I was even paying for therapy and rehab, but he always skipped out on them, saying he had no problem and he was sure the next time would be his big payoff. He may be a lost cause. Then what should I do? I don't know. Don't act like this doesn't concern you. But it doesn't. You took responsibility for everything once you kicked me out. I double and triple check that you understand that once I left, I was never coming back. I have zero intention of helping you out and will not return under any circumstance. Use your elite skills and status to power through this, alright buddy? Do you really think you can abandon me at a time like this? I am your older brother. You must respect me and do what I want you to do. As you said yourself, I'm just mimicking what my older brother does. What do you mean? So, I'm abandoning my position and claim no responsibility of a situation that is clearly difficult, but can be solved through hard work and sacrifice. Just like you, big brother. I learned it from you. <laughs> Take some advice from yourself here and get off your butt and do something with your life. You'll be unable to fulfill your dream of leeching off mom and dad, so you might need to revise your plans. Ironic that you ridiculed me for the imaginary lifestyle you then wanted to take up, only to find out that you have more trouble and responsibility than the life you were living because it was too hard for you. After his hasty decision to quit his job, Richard found himself in a difficult situation. In a moment of desperation, he embarrassingly returned to his former employer and pleaded with them to rescind his resignation. He claimed to have had a change of heart and found new motivation to become an asset to the company. However, his pleas fell on deaf ears and his resignation was approved, leaving him without a job. To make matters worse, word had gotten out about his reasons for quitting and the situation he found himself in. 
causing him to be ridiculed by his former co-workers during his last two weeks at the company. As the family's financial situation worsened due to my father's debts, I refused to help out and Richard was forced to find the first job that would accept him. It was a humbling experience for him and hopefully one that will teach those who are too prideful to reign in their haughtiness. Otherwise, they may end up like Richard, struggling to make ends meet and facing the consequences of their actions.